morning. Hi, Darlene from Super at 60. I hope you enjoyed our wonderful long weekend in Lancaster. We had such a wonderful time. Um, we've been there so many times and every once in a while we discover something, a little something new each time we go. Um, but we do kind of the same things. You know, we love, uh, I love to shop. And uh, yeah, so I made sure to get plenty of that in. And I don't know, we love to antique, look for um, just unique things. Uh, we didn't find too much stuff this, this time around, a few things, and I will show you that. But basically we just relaxed and had fun. The uh, Amish home that we stayed in was just lovely. And I'll show you some pictures of that. You know, it's kind of um, the upstairs. We had the entire upstairs to ourselves and it's very Amish, you know, it's, you'll see, you, you saw that it is not um, a frilly, fancy, uh, something that maybe um, um, English, as they say, <laughs> might decorate a and b or a homestay like that. But to me, that's kind of most of the charm of going to Lancaster. I mean, my goodness, you know, <laughs> um, we have a long history, really, of Lancaster. We've been going there for over 30 years. Uh, we've made many, many Amish friends along the way, and we love to visit them. And uh, I know you saw that little picture of Annie, my Amish mom. Oh, she was the dearest thing. And every time we go up there, we just miss her more and more and more. But it's hard. But I know that she would be happy to know that we are still coming up there. The hardest thing is like passing her house. I, I just kind of close my eyes, grit my teeth, and get through it because it's it's really tough. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so anyway, I'm so grateful that you're here. And I, again, I hope that you enjoyed those pictures. Ah, I just love that video. It's so beautiful. And I want to show you just a few of the things um, that we picked up in Lancaster while on this trip. All right. One of the first places we stop at, and I always make sure to go there uh, every time we go up, is the Centerville Food. What do they call that? Center Bill, uh, bulk food. Yeah, things. Uh, a lot of things come in bulk. A lot of the store is just grocery store as well. But um, as you can see here, this giant bag of uh, unbleached superior flour uh, milled from the soft winter wheat. This is 25 pound bag. I think I got it for about $6. Uh, it's still in, it's still very good, you know, like within dates and whatever. And I will, oh my goodness, the breads that are gonna come from that big bag. <laughs> All right, and then down here, some snaggy things. Uh, mostly my husband, he loves these things. Um, these are those uh, sesame sticks. Those are good, I have to admit. Then I got this huge big bag of the Himalayan salt. I just, I love using that salt. I think it's just beautiful. And that's 9.50 for uh, almost a three and a half pound bag of Himalayan salt. And it's good, the quality is excellent. This uh, I picked up because it's um, yeah, baking powder, but it's aluminum free, and you can't always find that. Sometimes you have to go online to be able to get the um, aluminum free and the, the double acting. I like that as well. So I was happy to find that. Down here, a few more little snackies. Um, rye Worcestershire bagel chips. We have two of those. Mm -hmm. Some chocolate covered pretzels. Um, <laughs> These were two trays of uh, the bottom one is molasses cookies. This top one is peanut butter cookies. Um, yeah, we snuck into those a little bit. So um, they were they were pretty good. I have to admit, mine are better. But um, yeah, those were those were okay. You know, just to have upstairs uh, where we where we were staying, it was fine. This I was so excited about. Um, I to me, it just looked like. You know, you've got to have this, Darlene. Do not go home without it because you will think about it over and over every single day. It is a homemade pie dough mix. I mean, you can see that it's got the shortening or I guess shortening, yeah, that's in there already and makes uh, for four eight-inch pie crusts. And you, do, you use four cups of the mix and four ounces of water and crumble it into a pie, and I guess roll it out. 
So yeah, I'm excited to use that. Why not? Over here is some Red Star yeast. I love that, $1.67 for uh, almost a half a pound of yeast. These are so cute. Oh, I really use the heck out of this stuff. This one on top is called Sanding White Sugar. I like to put it on top of uh, cookies, of course, frosted cookies, but mostly I really like to put it on top of sweetbreads and muffins. And these two are um, white gourmet sugar. And they're all, they're just bigger, bigger things of sugar. Um, and they sparkle, <laughs> they really do. When your breads and muffins come out of the oven and you put them on there, you wanna put them on there first before you bake them. They just sparkle, they're so pretty. Yeah, I like that. And then right here we have another, um, this is a five and a half pound bag of high gluten flour. Okay, this is the uh, bread flour. And what I like to do is mix my bread flour with an even amount of my all-purpose flour. That way, um, and then mark it bread, I mark it bread flour anyway. It just stretches a little bit further and you get excellent, excellent uh, bread results from that. Down here, I do have some of these bread bags left, but I wanted to make sure I did not run out. They are so wonderful to put your bread in. Uh, it fits a, you know, a regular loaf pan of bread. Just have little ties. Um, I save ties when we get bread from the store and it has the little, the little wire ties on it. I save them, put them in the same place and I have a little stack of them and I use them for when I wanna store my breads or give them away. They make beautiful gifts. This is pretty much the same idea. It's just one and a half quart, one and a half quart? I'm sorry, one and a half pint. Um, kind of like you would something you would put little candies in or maybe three or four little cookies, put a little ribbon around it and give it away as a sweet little uh, gift. So I made sure I had a, a few of those. Um, okay, that's from somewhere else. And then I guess, I guess that's it for the uh, Mennonite Supply Store. Boy, it, huh, that was so much fun. Love going there, love, love it. And it was busy, let me tell you. All right, and then also, um, I love Sharp Shopper. I know there's so many of you out there who know nothing about a Sharp Shopper. You've never seen it, you've never heard of it. Um, you've, you've never shopped at one, of course. And that's because Sharp Shopper is Mennonite run. It is so much fun. The prices are so low. And the one that we went to up in Pennsylvania, we always hit this one because it's huge. It's so much bigger than most of the other ones. They are in Pennsylvania and the state of Virginia. Okay, so when we, when we go up there, we hit the ones in Pennsylvania, where we are in Lancaster. And then uh, we have one here in Virginia, um, not too far from us, about an hour. So sometimes we like to take a Saturday, go up, get up there early. It's a beautiful drive for us and um, just kind of make an afternoon of it. It's fun. So anyway, while we were there, we got some of these kind bars, the peanut butter dark chocolate. I got a stack of bread, aluminum bread pans. I got some spices. I have wanted to have this uh, pizza and pasta topper for so long and I am so, it was, I was just thrilled when I saw that there. So yeah, that'll go on top of my, that actually will go into my pizza crust when I make it. I will put a little bit of that in there as well as uh, putting some into my sauce. And maybe we'll do that together. There's some dill weed, some chives, some rosemary, needed it all, some kalamata. Um, no, those are not kalamata, are they? Well, they're just, they're just olives. Hey, my husband picked those up. He's the one who eats them. I can't stand olives. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, got some food coloring because, and they're beautiful pastel colors, and this is that time of year. So my little grandson and I will be uh, baking a little Easter cupcake soon, and I'm excited about that. I got a package of safe uh, instant yeast, which I'm excited about. That is very much in date and uh, will go into my freezer. I'll put it in a canning jar and then into my freezer. These little things are so cute. They're per perfectly lemon. They are made with organic lemon juice and essential oils, and they are an Italian product. They're actually made in Italy. So we'll see what those are like. I got um, two cases of Propel for $2.99, uh, a dozen each for $2.99. And uh, yeah, 
those are pretty good. I have electrolyte issues occasionally, so it's good to have something that I can take care of that with. And then over here, I love these sparkling ices. So we picked up as many as we could. Uh, mango orange and sparkling lemonade. Those are so, so good. And then I also got some of this King Arthur all um, all purpose unbleached. Always try, try, try and buy on bleach. Why would you buy bleached? And you ask yourself, why would I buy something that was bleached? I mean, think of the word bleached. Mm -mm. Try to find all purpose, even if it's just a few dollar, a few cents usually uh, extra or maybe a whole dollar extra if you can possibly do it. Um, swing for the on bleached if you can. And uh, that is a 12 pound bag. And I think I paid, what does that say? $4.89 for that 12 pound bag. So I've got plenty of flour. I do have some people that I can share that with. And then these juices, um, I just like to pick up 100% uh, juice whenever I can. And they were just like dirt cheap. So <laughs> I got those. I mix those with a little water and some, uh, what did I put in there? Oh, some monk fruit. Yeah, and that's my drink. I just kind of drink that throughout the day. Trying to stay away from diet sodas. Okay. Then we went into this, uh, what was it called? Woodshed or something. It was an antique store. I didn't buy much there, but I have been looking for one of these sweet little um, microwave bowl cozies. You use pot holders to get it out of the microwave because the bowl is always so, so hot. And I just never feel safe holding the, that bowl with those pot holders. So um, I've seen these, I've wanted one of these. I really wanted to make one myself, but I never got around to it. So um, there's the little chickens on there. They had other fabrics too, but out of all the fabrics that they had, I thought that one was the cutest. So that's where I got that. All right, so there's everything that was on the table. Let me bring it over here to my kitchen counter. I'll show you just a few more things. Ooh, this is the fun. I love this fun. We went to a secondhand store. It's called Reuse It. It's in Leola. And I'm telling you, it is the most beautiful secondhand store I've ever been in. I mean, it's like a very exclusive department store. You know, somebody designed it so beautifully. These two books right here. I did purchase there, quick and easy casseroles using the um, crunchy onions. I just, I've looked through it already probably three or four times and I'm already excited about that one because <laughs> I love those things. And then this book from Panera and it's uh, not only just breads, but it's also got um, all kinds of, it's got soups and salads and sides and oh, I just, I cannot wait to, it's crostini. Oh, it's got a sourdough starter in here. If you guys are interested in doing that, I already have one going. So, um, but I do, I do plan to definitely check this out. I think there was a white, yeah, I marked it. I marked it. Let's see if I can get that open for you. I'm making this, I'll tell you. This is cinnamon raisin white bread. I am very interested in baking this bread and I'm gonna use my half all purpose, on bleach and all purpose and half bread flour check that out and see how it works. So I'm excited to have that one. So those two books came from the secondhand store. They were about $2 a piece. Then there's a favorite bookstore up there that I love to go into and they are not secondhand. Um, and they sell all the lovely, really beautiful Amish uh, stories, which I just love. If you have never picked up an Amish love story book, please do it. It just takes you away to a world that is so peaceful and so calming and you just don't want the book to end. I know many times when I'm right close to the end, I'll just close the book and walk away because I want to extend it at least one more day. So I got this one, The Unseemly Wife. Looked very, very interesting. And then I got this one, A Mother's Gift. I think that looks like a sweet book. And then The Christmas Remedy by Cindy Woodsmall. She is an excellent writer. You will love anything that she has written. She has a lot of Christmas books out and the Christmas ones are fabulous. They're not just solely about Christmas, but um, yeah, see that pretty little picture that they show there? When you're done with this book, you will feel like you really visited a town 
just like that in your mind. You will create that. That's good writing, good writing in these books. And then back here, I found this United States of Bread. Isn't that interesting? Um, yeah, I, I actually picked up two of them. Uh, one will be a gift. I just think it's pretty cool. And some of the recipes are oh so interesting. And then, of course, the Bird in Hand Farmer's Market. Many of you probably have even been there. Let me know in the comments below if you have been there and you've enjoyed um, something special from there. And of course, you cannot leave Lancaster without whoopie pies. <laughs> but believe it or not, now I've been good. This, these are gifts, okay? These are absolutely gifts. I'm not even gonna see one. I would say I'm not even gonna smell one, but I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't help it. You can stand this far apart from it, and I can smell them from here. They're wonderful, and they're so fresh, just beautiful, so. And then in that secondhand store, I found these beautiful, beautiful little jars, these little ball jars. Some of them are ball. I love lids like this. What are they called? I can't remember what those lids like this are called. They have a name. I don't know, but they're beautiful. And then I just fell in love with this one, Mason one, Atlas Mason. So, so pretty. And then back here, um, I don't think this, this is not, you know, anything old or anything, but I needed, I really needed something like this. I have my vanilla that, my homemade vanilla that I have been making, and I want to pour it into a pretty bottle like that. So it came with a cork, but I wanted a brand new one. So I did buy one. So I'll be using that. And then back here, I found this old bowl. I just love it. Look at the inside of it. You could tell like a beaters or something has gone around and around and around. There's not a scratch. There's not a chip. There's nothing. Look at the color. <laughs> Made in America, it says, yeah. So I was very, very pleased with my little treasures there. And then we stopped in another store uh, called Pleasant Valley and it is so beautiful. I mean, the things that they have, and I think, yeah, there's pictures in the video of that store as well. And look at that. If any of you know the praise song, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, I saw it hanging up on the wall and I said, Lou, we got to have this. <laughs> it's like my favorite one. I sing it all the time. And uh, so yeah, we got that one. And actually we picked up two because one of them is a gift. Okay. So shh, don't say anything. And then down here, I did pick up a stone where uh, a stone countertop, um, cutting board. I just wanted one. It's, it's good size. It's just right. I think, yes, I can cut on my countertop, but I don't want to, I cannot do it. I, I just can't do it, but I like the idea of that. So yeah, I'll be doing that. And then the last thing that I'm going to show you is a, a few things that came to, from Amazon while I was away. This beautiful, heavy Nordic fun pan. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That will make, look, the slices are already there for you. Even though I like to serve my blunt cakes this way, um, this one might have to be turned over. Now it seems a little tad bit small, so I'm not even sure yet a whole cake mix is gonna fit in there. I'll have to try this out. And then I got this great big container and this, I think it's about 25 pounds, hold 25 pounds. I am going to put my half uh, on beach flour and my half bread flour, mix it all up, sift it up really, really well, keep it in here, mark it as bread flour, and it has a, the snap um, locking mechanism here, and a nice handle where you can actually pick it up and put it down in my pantry when I need it, uh, in and out. So I'm very excited about that. And then the last thing I got, and I love these, look at these new spoons I got. Tablespoon, a teaspoon, half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. Yeah, it says sprinkle kindness, share joy, spread love, and scatter laughter. And they're heavy. They're very weighty. They're made with pewter. And it comes with this sweet little hook. And I'll use this too. Yep, it's just a little hook. Put it up on the wall and hang your sweet spoons from here. Last night, I was just about ready to get into bed and I thought, you know what? I am gonna run downstairs real quick and put that Amish bread starter together. 
And I'm also gonna take my um, Sally Ann sourdough starter out of the refrigerator where she's been parked for about three weeks. And I'm gonna get them both started up and going. You need, you need 10 days uh, to get this starter going. So last night I used my brand new bowl that I got at that secondhand store and I was so excited to use it. Anyway, um, what's in here and what I did last night is one packet of yeast, any kind of yeast, it doesn't matter. One packet is two and a quarter teaspoons of dry yeast. So if you get your yeast in bulk and you do it by the teaspoons, that's what you need to put in here. Then uh, a quarter cup of warm water. Let that sit for just a few minutes off to the side while you get the other things ready. And then I put in one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, and one cup of milk. I use 2% milk, do not use anything lower, 1% or skim, it just will not work. So 2% or higher whole milk is just fine. So I came down this morning and this is, I'm gonna consider this day two and I'm going to uh, give it a stir because days one through five, all you have to do, let me get you a little closer here. All you have to do is stir it. It should be a nice vanilla, milky color. It's beautiful, just beautiful. It has risen a little bit. I mean, you can see the rise in there. Uh, of course, it's not gonna be like a yeast bread because it's still very liquidy. It's beautiful. Oh, the smell is just fabulous. All right, so here's our stir for this morning. And you know what? That is all we have to do today. So I'm gonna park it back on top of my stove. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna cover it back up. And yes, I will put that back there. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today in my kitchen and uh, seeing all the <laughs> wonderful little goodies that we picked up on our trip to Lancaster. Um, uh, I wish so badly that some of those stores were just down the street, but unfortunately they are not. But oh, for us, it is just so well worth it because it's something that we enjoy so much so um, I hope that you enjoyed everything. I really, really do. I hope you enjoyed the haul. I hope you enjoyed the very tail end of the video where we put the Amish Friendship Bread starter together. I hope that you'll do that with me. Go ahead, get it started right now. If you're watching this video, run over to your kitchen and uh, get that started. It doesn't take much to get it started and it's very, very easy. And if you've never done it before, you will absolutely love the results of all your big products while using the Amish Friendship Bread Starter. Trust me on this, I have been making them for years and years and years. And one more thing before I go, something that I forgot to show you and I thought I really wanted to because I thought, oh wow, that is so neat. Um, as far as flavorings, you know, lemon, vanilla, orange, all that stuff. Look at this, can you see that? Uh, marshmallow, I got two of them. Marshmallow flavoring. Can you even imagine this in a white frosting? Ah, yeah, or a vanilla cake mix if you're making little cupcakes. All right, we'll use it for something, I promise. All righty, thank you again. Lord bless you, and I will see you again so very soon. Bye now.